Welcome traders to another Tikno Weekly Market Outlook for a week commencing the 11th of April with me, Patrick Munley. Heading into a holiday shortened week with most uh, Western markets out on Friday for Good Friday and the uh, extended Easter weekend. So uh, focus is firmly back on geopolitical risks. Uh, obviously the crisis in Ukraine continues to uh, grind on and uh, it's a Markets are starting to, in some shape or form, try to look past that and focus on economic data. There is one other geopolitical development of note uh, this weekend. France heads to the polls uh, today, Sunday, for the first round of presidential voting. Barring a very surprising first round victory by one of the 12 candidates, the top two candidates will then face off in the second round, uh, coming two weeks later on Sunday, April the 24th. The polls are very tight. Uh, means it, uh, Looks like that a second round runoff between President Macron and Marie Le Pen, his main challenger, would result in a modest victory for Macron. The Economist magazine gives Macron 98% odds of getting to the second round and 78% odds of winning it all. So moving to the data this week, starting in the US, uh, Fed speakers on Monday, we'll hear from Bostick, Bowman, Waller uh, at Fed uh, Listens event. We'll also hear from Evans too. And then on Tuesday, we get the March LFIB Small Business Optimism, looking for a 94.9 print versus the 95.7 last time out. Rising prices are, uh, are a key concern with annual inflation at 40-year highs. We also get March CPI on uh, Tuesday, and looking for that to come in hot 1.2%. Moving on to Wednesday, we get the March PPI, last time 0.8%, looking for 1.2% print. Ongoing supply issues are supporting producer prices. We also hear from uh, Fed Speaker Barkin. Then on Thursday, we get the uh, March retail sales in the US, looking for 0.5% fuel price surges to crimp retail sales in the near term. We also get March Import price index looking for a 2.5% print versus the 1.4% last time out. Import prices are set to remain elevated. We also get initial jobless claims and they are expected to remain at very low levels. We get Feb uh, business inventories looking for a 1.3% versus the 1.1% last time. Businesses rebuilding inventory at a pretty robust pace. And then we get April. Uh, University of Michigan sentiment, looking for a 58.8 versus the 59.4 last time out. Inflation and interest rate concerns have hit confidence hard. And we will hear from uh, Fed Speaker Nesta. And then on Friday, we round it out with the April Fed Empire State Index, looking for a positive 2% print there, uh, providing a timely update on the NY manufacturing sector. We also get March industrial production looking for 0.4% versus the 0.5% last time. Volatility lingers as firms navigate supply issues. And then we ran out the activity in the US on Friday when we hear from uh, Fed Speaker Parker. From a technical perspective, the dollar index is to uh, potentially be completing an interim five-way sequence here. So I'm looking as we uh, hold the highs just over the 100 level uh, for a three-way corrective move now back into to test Trend channel support, also monthly projected range resistance into the 9730s before the commencing another leg to the upside. Uh, if we take out the uh, prior highs of last week, uh, we will then look for an extension up into projected trend channel resistance at the 101 level before looking for that pullback. Uh, ultimately, what we're looking for now is this triangle to complete to get a test of the projected triangle resistance at 102.28 before we may see a regime shift in the dollar, focusing to the downside. In the Eurozone, uh, from a data perspective, let's see what we've got on tap. Uh, we start the week, uh, Tuesday really, is um, April ZEW survey of expectations. The Russia-Ukraine conflict uh, continuing to cloud the outlook there. And then on Wednesday, we get February industrial production. Uh, supply pressures are an ongoing concern. I'm looking for a flat print there, 0%. Uh, and then we round it out in the Eurozone on Thursday with the all-important ECB policy decision and deposit rate. Uh, markets are anticipating that uh, they remain on hold at 0.5%. Uh, focus on rhetoric around risks and policy normalization is going to be the key uh, 
key watch there. Uh, from a technical perspective, the euro dollar is sitting right at uh, pivotal support here, just above the 108 level. I'm actually looking for a move to get one more extension here to the downside, test into the 107, 106, 50 area where we have monthly projected range support. From there, watch for bullish divergence to be maintained, and then we look for a three-way corrective move back into the trend channel resistance, 112.56. We also have the projected monthly range resistance there and the high volume node uh, 130.13. Moving to the UK, pretty busy week in terms of data this week, um, starting out on Monday we get the Feb trade balance, uh, data measurement change, uh, figures should normalise in February after the skew from the last print. Uh, on Tuesday, we get the February ILO employment rate looking for 3.8% versus 3.9% last time out. Unemployment now at pre-COVID levels in the UK. On Wednesday, inflation data, March CPI, 0.8% last time out. Energy inflation remains a key driver in the UK with this cost of living crisis being, uh, being widely uh, experienced. Um, we, and that rounds out the week in terms of uh, UK data. From a technical perspective, um, Sterling has retested the prior cycle lows here, 129.80s. As this trend line resistance remains intact at 131, uh, look for a further downside move to initially test the projected pitchfork uh, descending trend channel support. Any bounces, as long as they're gained, they're contained by this trend channel. We are looking then for a quality objective at 126.59 before we could see a more meaningful corrective move in sterling. However, if we can get, if we do get a close back through this trend channel resistance, um, we could have a potential total bottom in place, and that would then see us up targeting initially the pivot here at 131.80s. But for now, under the trend line, we are looking for further downside extension. In Japan, very light in terms of data next week. Uh, just one reading of note on Wednesday. We will get February machinery orders. Last time out, minus 2%, looking for minus 1.5%. Capital spending has been squeezed by the commodity and transport costs. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar yen looks like we are about to complete an interim uh, third wave attempt here. So I'm looking for prices to take out the prior highs. We want to initially look for a test of the 127 extension to the 161 extension of our interim uh, corrective move here. So we're looking for 126.14, 127.40 area. Watch for bearish divergence to develop there. And we look for a three-way corrective move uh, to ultimately find support back into the 121, uh, 121.20s before it's the next leg to the upside uh, develops there in terms of the dollar yen. Last but not least, rounding it out down under in Australia. What do we have here? On Mon uh, Tuesday, sorry, we get the March NAB business survey. Uh, hospitality should see further upside versus the hit from the severe floods in New South Wales and Queensland. Uh, we also get March overseas arrivals for Australia, uh, gouging the border reopening pre-COVID average of uh, negative 1.8 million per month. So we're looking for a positive print there. And then on Wednesday, we get April WBC MI consumer sentiment. Last time at 96.6. Any post budgets improvements are what analysts will be looking for there. And then on Thursday, we round the week out with inflation expectations. Last time 4.9%. Uh, will falling petrol prices lead to a decline in expectations? We also get March employment change, looking for a 30 handle there. Uh, weekly payrolls suggest employment continue to expand through the extreme weather events on the East Coast. Uh, may have had some impact, but the employment rate should come in lower than the 4% print last time at 3.9%. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar has broken through its descending weekly trend line resistance. So I'm looking for any three wave corrective moves now back in to test that trend line, a broken trend line resistance to act as support. We also have the trend channel projected support coming in. So 73.50s, 73.60s, we look for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a move up to test the 77.60s to 77.90s. 
At this stage, only a closing loss of this trend channel support would suggest we may have a more meaningful high in place in terms of the Aussie dollar. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 11th of April. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.